to Money Mondays, powered by the Joseph Business School, where we bring you up-to-date money news for your personal finances and businesses. I'm your host, Jill Thompson. Today on our podcast, we have Jerry Tolliver, founder and CEO of Fly Credit Solutions. She's an experienced credit expert and financial literacy advocate that is known for helping empower and support our communities in financial education. Jerry has helped her clients secure home ownership, become 100% debt free, grow their businesses, and develop a positive relationship with money that creates generational wealth. If you are not in a place of financial freedom, oftentimes having good credit can jumpstart your future. It can provide access to capital, help you acquire property, and secure low interest rate loans. When used right, Credit can serve as a weapon to work for you, but when used wrong, it can work as a weapon against you. Money Monday audience, get your pens and pencils ready for this segment. We're going to have a very candid conversation with Jerry about credit and how it's being affected right now, primarily with the COVID-19 pandemic. Get ready. Jerry, welcome to our segment. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's going well. So Jerry, what can we do to protect our credit scores during this current pandemic? That's a really good question, Jill. Uh, Actually, so right now we're in a really interesting time, right? We're we're in a panic, a lot of people are in fear. Uh, But the first thing that I want you all to know is that you shouldn't panic. Don't panic. There are a lot of solutions and resources that you can take advantage of so that you can start protecting your credit. The first thing that you really need to do if you wanna protect your credit during this pandemic is you have to pull your credit reports. Pulling your credit reports is really going to give you a very good idea of what's already reporting on your credit, uh, what your creditors are already reporting on your reports, uh, and it gives you a general idea of your scores as well. Now, there are a couple different ways to pull your credit reports. We'll talk about that a little later, but that's the first step to really protecting your credit scores. That's just getting in the know. Now, step two to protecting your credit scores is to call your actual creditors. If you're currently unemployed right now and you don't have a very consistent income, or maybe your hours were already cut, well, in that case, you may not be able to afford the payments that you were already paying. So I would say call your creditors, call your mortgage company, take a call to your your landlord, find out what you can do so that they don't, uh, so they, they don't, Uh, report late payments on your credit reports in the event that you can't pay your bills. There's a lot of flexibility going on right now with mortgage lenders and creditors. So if you just give them a call rather than, you know, ignoring them, then they'll be more than happy to help you during this time. Mortgage companies are giving people forbearances. Uh, You've got also rental properties. They're also giving people an opportunity to skip some payments for now uh, until that time comes where we open right back up. So call your creditors, see if they can put you in forbearance, see if they can, you know, knock some payments off or just work with you during this time. Now, the third thing I want you all to know is that you don't want to pay any of your bills late. That's the worst thing that you could possibly do for your credit is pay anything late. Now, what is late? Late is if you pay something uh, 30 days or more after the bill was due. So if your mortgage was due on the 1st of May, but you pay it on the 2nd of um, June, then that's going to be considered a late payment. Now, granted, if you pay it 15 days after that it was due, it's not really considered a late payment. Sure, you will incur a late payment uh, fee from the bank, but it won't actually affect your credit scores until that time actually comes. So 30 days or more late is terrible for your credit. So please, 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 whatever you do, make sure that you pay everything on time or just go in forbearance or go into deferment. And then the the next point that I really wanna make is that during this time is a great great opportunity uh, for people to start lowering their interest rate payments. Now, the first step to really saving money is lowering the payments that you're currently paying. So I always tell people, call the companies that you already do business with. See if they're going to be willing to to negotiate down some of your payments that you're already making. See if they'll lower some fees or lower your interest rates. Refinance if you can so that you can start saving some money. 
interest rates are relatively pretty low right now. And so you can take advantage of that by applying for a refinance loan and they'll give you a lower rate so that you can save money across, you know, years, time as it passes. So I think those are the four best tips that I can really give someone right now if they're looking to protect their credit and their money. That's good, Jerry. And so specifically, how do you handle collectors and creditors at this time? That's a really good question, actually. Uh, it's all about communication, 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 being open. Now, if you're currently in a position where collection companies or collectors are calling you right now, you're probably like, well, I don't want to answer the phone because I don't really know what to say. I can't pay them right now. Well, that's okay. You can just tell them that. And you could probably even offer them a, a, a smaller payment in exchange for them to either remove it off of your credit or for them to just stop calling you altogether. This is a great time to probably take care of some debt because creditors are, they're strapped for money. They need to get paid. So if collection companies are calling you and you can negotiate down the debt, right? If you have a $100 debt right now and somebody's calling you to collect it, maybe you can negotiate down to 25 bucks. Then you can get that debt off your back. This is a perfect time to take advantage of that. But if you're not in a position to make a payment on an account right now, that's perfectly fine. Just tell them that. <laughs> yeah. Just tell them that I'm not in a position to make a payment. I'm currently going through uh, some financial distress because of COVID-19. You know, can we make a payment arrangement so that I can make a payment next month or whenever we get back on our feet? And they'll be more than happy to work with you. They'll be more than happy to work with you. And so, Jerry, does the same process work for the person where they may be saying that their bills are due or they've experienced a job loss or even cut hours? Is it the same process? I would say so for sure. Um, if you've lost your job and, you, and you've lost your income, the, the first thing you really should be focused on is saving money. Saving as much money, as much cash as you possibly can, especially if you don't have good credit right now or if you don't have any other type of financial uh, financing opportunities available to you, uh, you have to save as much cash as you possibly can. We don't really know how long this is going to last. And if you don't have at least six months of savings say saved up in cash this might be a struggle for you and so if you've lost your income you don't have any any more money coming in right now tell them that tell them i can't make a payment right now you know can we make an arrangement when i get back on my feet and then it'll, it'll you can move about it that way hmm. and so jerry are there any resources that are available to help people save their credit scores at this time so a lot of uh, uh, credit bureaus are actually offering people a, a way to monitor their credit reports for free. So your friends over at Experian, uh, TransUnion, Equifax, they're actually giving you an opportunity to pull your credit reports for free. Uh, you can also do this at annualcreditreport.com. They will give you your credit reports for free. However, they won't give you your scores. So if you want your scores and you want your reports, and I highly encourage anybody that's watching this, if you are not currently monitoring your credit right now, you really should be doing that. There's a lot of scamming and scheming going on right now, and you have to really pay very close attention to your credit scores, any payments, or if anyone may be even applying for new loans or credit cards under your name, and you may not even be aware of it. So pull your credit reports today. My Monitor your credit reports using maybe even creditkarma.com. That's also a good resource to pull at least two of your credit reports so that you can see what's going on at all times. Now, you also have the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, the Paycheck Protection Program, it, it is more so for business owners, but even some consumers can take advantage of it as well. Now, if you want to know more about the Paycheck Protection Plan, you really want to go over to sba.gov. SBA.gov will give you a lot more information related to that, but that's a really good way to even get some supplemental income co coming in. Now, FEMA, actually FEMA, I'm sorry, had a program. They actually just discontinued it. So uh, FEMA had an actual program that was also helping uh, in the midst of financial loss as well. Uh, so they, they, they don't have that available anymore, but it's possible that they may open it back up. So monitor 
FEMA.gov, FEMA.gov, and they'll be they'll be opening up more programs, giving out some more funding. But it's a most of a, a first come first serve kind of deal. So you just have to really, really like hone in on it and check it every day if you have to. Uh, but other than that, I would say you know look on YouTube. YouTube is filled, especially our YouTube channel. It's filled with free information related to paying off debt, lowering your rates, saving more money, improving your credit, and just unlocking financial freedom. So there's so many resources out of here. Just look for it and take advantage of it because you can come out of this pandemic better than you came into it before. That's good. So Jerry, let's back up a bit. For the person who's a novice and really um, doesn't know too much about credit, I know we talked a bit about business with the payroll protection, but some people really just don't know the basics which is how do you go and pull your credit report? So where do they go? Yeah, so the basics are always the best place to start, right? Uh, the, if you want to pull your credit reports and scores, there are a lot of different ways to go about it. You can do it at annualcreditreport.com. They will only give you your credit reports, but it's free. So you can get that there. If you want to get your true FICO credit scores, you can go to myfico.com. Just know that it is going to cost about 30 to 40 bucks. So if you don't want to pay that kind of money to pull your credit reports, you can also go to creditkarma.com. Creditkarma.com will give you your uh, Equifax report, uh, and they'll also give you your TransUnion report as well. So that way you'll be able to monitor your credit reports and see what's going on. If you want your Experian report, you can go over to Experian.com, and they will also give you your reports as well. Uh, I think the most important part, though, is learning how to read your credit reports. Because I do often come across people that are like, you know, my, my credit scores are low, um, I've got, you know, all this debt. Yet. And then when I pull it, that's not really the case, actually. I've actually run across people that have good credit, but they think they have bad credit. But it's only really because you just don't know how to read the credit report. Mm -hmm. So learning how to read the credit report will give you better direction that you need to take to start in making those necessary improvements. That's good. And so, Jerry, can you tell us what are some key things when pulling a credit report that we should be looking at that give us an indication of how to properly read it? Great, great question, actually. So if you're going to pull your credit reports and your idea behind that is to improve your credit or repair your credit or any damage, then you are going to have to pinpoint any negative accounts that are hurting you. Now, this could be a collection account. It could be a late payment. It could be a charged off credit card. It could be a repossession. It could be a bankruptcy. There's so many different types of negative accounts that can hurt you, but a lot of credit monitoring accounts or even when you pull your credit reports it'll actually say it in the comments so it'll it'll mark it as a negative account uh, and so what I would always tell someone to do if this is your first time pulling your credit reports and you're not really sure make sure that you look at the comments to see is it a late payment is it charged off is it negative if it's negative I want you to take a highlighter like one like this little highlighter and I want you to highlight the name and the account number as well as the inaccuracies related to the account. Now, what is an inaccuracy? Let's say that you have a collection account with ABC Collection Company. Well, ABC Collection Company, they're going to report this, uh, this account on your credit reports as something negative. It's a collection account. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight ABC Company you're going to highlight the account number associated with that. And then you're going to review every single line associated with this account. Now, this is the date that it was open. It may be the current balance on the account. It also may also, it may be past balances on the account too. So look at it line by line and find out, are there any inconsistencies related to the account? Is the balance correct? Is the date that it was open? Is that correct? Find out what's not correct and then you're going to start moving into phase three, which is disputing the accounts on your credit reports. So highlight them first, and then you can start moving into writing dispute letters to start disputing it from your reports. Good. So Jerry, how often are the creditors reporting to the bureaus? Like, is it every 30 days, every 60 days? Yeah, so your creditors report to the credit bureaus every single month. Uh, and the good way to, to figure out when they actually do it, especially with credit card companies, credit card companies, they have, uh, they have a due date and then they have a reporting date. The reporting date tells you when they actually report your balance 
to the credit bureaus. So your due date may be on the 2nd of May, but your reporting date may be on the 15th of May. Your best option is to pay any balances that you have off on your credit reports or credit cards before the reporting date so that if you pay your balances down, then they won't report any debt on your credit reports. So it is very, very, very uh, good to know that kind of information because you kind of manipulate your scores and it's, it's just really good to know. <laughs> That's good. However, Jerry, would you say that right now with the current pandemic and what a lot of families are experiencing, is it better to just pay the minimum balance? I would say if you're, if you're currently struggling with your finances and you don't have any income coming in, I would definitely say just pay the minimum balance so that you can avoid any late payments on your credit cards and accounts. So yes, pay them on time, but if you can only afford the minimum payment, just pay the minimum payment. That's good. So Jerry, we have a couple questions from our viewers. Um, we have a question from Deanne W. in Joliet, Illinois, which says, when you are disputing negative items on your credit report, please tell me what is the right verbiage to use? And that was Deanne? Deanne. Well, hi, Deanne. Thank you for the question. I, I appreciate that. Uh, so when you're trying to dispute information on your credit reports, you want to use what we call either factual disputes. Uh, factual disputes are you locating the errors in your credit reports. Uh, a lot of people do think that they have to have this specific kind of uh, language or jargon, and you really don't. You could just literally just write a letter to, uh, let's say, Equifax. Let's say you want to dispute a collection account with ABC Company. Well, generally what you would do is you would write a letter to Equifax that says, hello, Equifax, my name is Deanne, and I am uh, disputing this collection account with ABC Company. Now, the reason why you are disputing this with ABC Company is because the date that it was opened isn't right. Can you please please verify this information. If you cannot verify the information, I would like it removed from my credit reports. Now, the reason why you want to say it like that is because you really want to be specific about what you are disputing, and you also want to be specific about the outcome that you want to happen. A lot of people, they just dispute it with the credit bureaus, and they say, hey, I'm disputing this account. Verify it. And it's like, okay, well, they can verify it, but what do you want to happen whether they do or they don't? Mm -hmm. So be very specific about the outcome that you want to happen uh, so that you can, you'll have much better success that way. Now, there are other ways to dispute information on your credit reports. You've got 609 methods and 611 methods, uh, but the only way that you can use the 609 and 611 is to understand your consumer rights. You have a lot of consumer rights as a consumer, and the FTC makes sure that they are enforced. <laughs> so, uh, you know, debt collector, they can't call you at a certain time or uh, credit bureaus and creditors, they cannot report anything that is inaccurate on your credit report. They cannot. Everything on your credit report has to be 100% accurate, 100% verifiable, 100% um, all of that, right? It cannot be outdated, any of it. It has to be 100% accurate. And so if you find inaccuracies in your credit report, then you could dispute it for that reason and that reason alone and get it removed from your reports. Even if, there are, even if the account belongs to you, that's the interesting part about it. We've gotten bankruptcies off of people's credit reports. We've gotten charged off repossessions off of people's credit reports. And it belonged to them. It's just that it had to be removed because it was not reporting correctly. That's awesome. So another question from George S. of Lake Providence, Louisiana State. How will missed payments affect my credit score during the current pandemic? Okay, I'm sorry, I missed the name. George S. Hi, George. Well, uh, late payments. Uh, late payments are not your friend with your credit scores. Missed uh, payments. It was missed payments, Jerry. Uh, missed payment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, missed payments are actually the same thing as a late payment, to be honest. So if you miss a payment, it is the most terrible thing that you can do for your credit scores. Uh, it's funny, I, uh, I missed a payment once uh, on my credit card about five years ago when I was moving. I don't know how I did it. I thought that my credit card was on auto pay, but for whatever reason, I missed the payment on the credit card. Well, I later got a notification from my credit monitoring company that told me, Jerry, you missed a payment and your scores had declined. 
my scores dropped over 120 points just by missing a payment. So when I tell you that you cannot miss payments on your credit cards or your loans, I really do mean it because missed payments count as 35% of your credit score. And that's a large chunk, 35% of your credit score. And the higher your credit score is, the bigger the impact is going to be. So pay the minimum payment on everything that you have at least. Make sure you, you don't pay anything late. But if you do, try calling the companies up. Just try to give them a call and say, hey, I missed this payment. I did it by mistake. You know, it, it, was a, a, it was a mistake. I did not mean to do that. And just plead your case. And in most cases, they'll actually reverse the late payment and your scores will actually raise. So it's called what we call a goodwill adjustment. You can write a letter or give them a call and some banks will be more than happy to reverse a late payment, the missed payment. <laughs> awesome, Jerry. So we have another question. Um, this is sent from Anonymous. It says, my credit score is in the 500 to 600 range because of medical bills. I'm interested in purchasing my first home. What can I do to increase my score so that I qualify for a low rate interest loan? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, and thank you for that, Anonymous. Uh, for the, so the first thing you really want to know about medical bills is I do work with a lot of lenders. And it's interesting that they don't necessarily really take into consideration uh, medical bills because a lot of people find themselves with medical debt, right? So I have quite a, a few lenders that I work with that will actually dismiss the medical bills. They'll kind of like overlook the medical bills, uh, but everything else has to be spotless. So what I would like to know is what else do you have in your credit reports other than medical bills? Because if you don't have anything else than, but medical bills, then I would say start actually working on rebuilding your credit and establishing some new credit. So if you don't have any credit cards, maybe open up a couple of credit cards. Opening up credit cards, credit cards, period, are great for your credit scores. So having, you know, two to three credit cards is an excellent thing to have on your credit. Uh, what I would say, though, however, is don't max out your credit cards because lenders do frown upon that greatly. So if you're going to get some credit cards, don't really use them too much. Just, you know, pay them, use them, pay them off, use them, pay them off so that you can gain what we call credit history. Uh, so get a couple credit cards. If you're a current renter right now, you can actually add the last two years of your payment history on your credit reports. So you're, you may not be getting credit for those payments anyway, right? Your, your lender or your landlord is getting credit for those payments. Well, now you can. So you can go over to rentreporters.com, rentreporters.com, and they will add the last two years of your rental payments to your credit reports, and that will help you raise your scores as well. Uh, what you're really working on doing doing is counteracting uh, the negative accounts with some positives because a lot of people they have negative accounts but they don't have any positive accounts so there is this imbalance and it's you know lowering your credit scores but if you do establish some new credit that is going to help you raise your credit scores what you really want to shoot for is at least a 640 to a 680 credit score if you do anonymous you'll be able to get some of those better rates on your home loan that way okay and Jerry, I'm going to give you this one last question. It's from Brian J. of Chicago, Illinois. He states, after you start the credit repair process, how long does it typically take to see improvements in your credit score? So I get this question all of the time, actually. And this, the answer to this question really is it depends. And I, people hate when I say that, uh, but it does. It depends because everybody's credit situation is different. You have people that have been through bankruptcy a couple of times. You, you have people that have, you know, a mountains of credit card debt, or you have people that have, you know, been through medical situations and it landed them in an unfortunate, you know, position. So it really just depends, Brian. Um, on you know how long it's going to take if you have really severely damaged credit uh, then i would say it's going to take you a couple of years probably uh, but if you have only a couple of maybe collection accounts and you don't have any credit cards then what it sounds like to me is that you probably just need a little cleanup start disputing the collection accounts off your credit uh, however if you have a lot of late payments that's going to be a little difficult to repair as well so it it really depends brian but what i can say is that on average, it takes about four to six months. It could be shorter, it could be longer. However, in my five plus years being in this business, 
it takes about an average of four to six months. That's good, Jerry. And so this isn't a question from any particular person, but I just want to bring it up because oftentimes I've heard a couple of my friends address it, which is student loans and credit. Can you just talk to people who may have massive student loan debt? And what I mean by that is it's anything that's over $60,000 worth in student loan debt and how it affects their ability. Maybe they're interested in purchasing their first home or looking for a job, how it affects their job. Can you just talk to people about student loans and their impact on our credit? Okay, great question. So student loans are a little tricky uh, because with student loans, you can't bankrupt student loans. And a lot of people do find themselves drowning in student loan debt uh, and they're not really sure how to get out of it. And some people have just given up completely on paying it off. <laughs> so if you're trying to either get out of student loan debt or if you're struggling with maybe late payments on the student loan debt, then there's a couple of different things that you can do. Now, what you should know is right now during this pandemic, your student loan interest payments have been canceled right now. So if you make payments on your loans, it's all going towards principal. You're making two different payments on loans, my friends. You're making it on principal and you're making it on interest. Now, if your interest payments are being canceled, then if you make payments on your principal balance, your interest payments are going to automatically decline. That's just the way that it works. Your interest payments are based on your principal balance. So if you pay down your principal balance, you'll be able to save more money across the life of the loan. Now, let's say for instance, you're not in a position to make any payments on the student loans, then really, what you really want to do is you really want to call either you know wh whoever holds your student loans. If the if the U.S. Department of Education holds your student loans right now, you're going to have to give them a, a call. See if they can forbearance you. See if they can defer your payments because that's the only way you're going to avoid late payments on your student loans. If you ignore them, they are going to continuously report late, and then it will go into charged off status. Now, charged off status is the most negative status that you can have related to your loans. Now, what charged off status means is that you have missed three to four payments consecutively and the, the bank and the lender just said, you know, we're not going to get our money. So we're going to assign this debt to a collection or collector to see if they can get that payment from you. So if you're in a position where you already have a charged off loan, you can do two things. You can either rehab your student loan. And what rehabbing is, what this means, is that you will enter into an agreement with the collection agency that is now holding your student loans. You will call them up. You will say, hey, I'm looking for my student loan. I want to get it out of charged off status. I want to get it back into positive status. What they will do is they will enter you into a repayment, uh, a, a, some type of rehab repayment kind of program. Well, you will make a payment based on your income. Now, usually this payment is about five to $10 a month. If you make this payment five to six times consecutively, they will then take your payments in your, uh, your student loan account out of default, which is amazing. So this way, they'll take the late payments, they'll take it all off, and then it'll report back into positive status. Once you get it back into positive status, this is when you can either put it into forbearance or deferment. You cannot put your loans into forbearance or deferment if it's in charged off status. So if it's in charged off status, you have to get it out of charged off status. Now, let's say for instance, you have a lot of student loan debt, right? Across, you know, 10, 12 loans. Well, you may wanna consider consolidating. You may want to consider consolidating your student loan debt so that it'll make it easier for you to pay on it. Now, I'm kind of iffy about consolidation sometimes, but the only time it really does make sense is if you do have 60 plus thousand dollars worth of student loan debt and it's across a couple of different loans, you're lost and you're wondering, like, who do I pay? Well, in that case, just consolidate it, put it into one huge loan and then just attack it. Just attack it, attack it, attack it, pay it, pay it, pay it, and you'll be out of that loan in no time. That's really good. Jerry, and this is my own personal question, which is oftentimes we think about credit from a financial literacy standpoint where we're understanding credit, but there may be some business owners who are watching and they're trying to figure out how do I utilize my credit to now create wealth for generations? So can you talk about credit and wealth? Credit and wealth. I actually like this topic a lot. 
Um, because the interesting thing is, I, I realized the power of credit after I took my scores from a 545 to a 765. Uh, my credit was in the trash five years ago and I couldn't get approved for too much of anything. Uh, and so when I got educated about credit, I took my scores from a 545 to a 765. And then I started getting approved for some of those better credit cards that give you points and rewards and even free trips. And so once you start tapping into the power of credit, you can use other people's money to build businesses and you can use it to invest. You can use it to invest into real estate. You can use it to invest in the Forex market. You can use it to invest in the stock market. There are so many different ways for you to make money by leveraging the power of other people's money. Now, I'm a very big advocate of this because oftentimes we are taught to use our money to consume. I was actually that person. I use my credit to shop every single weekend. I use my credit to buy stuff that I didn't even need. What I want to encourage you all today is to make a shift uh, about what, with your mindset surrounding your credit. Instead of consuming on credit, instead of going to take that trip on credit, instead of you know shopping and buying unnecessary things that do not pay you back on credit, use your credit to do things that are productive. Use your credit to do things that produce more, more money, more freedom, more happiness. That's what it's really all about. Because yes, you can use your credit to buy the things and the stuff and you know the things that you're probably gonna buy again in like five, 10 years, or you could use it to, to buy things and, and you know investments that are going to pay you back. I learned this principle in this book called The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, that book changed my life actually. And once I got more familiar with the power of money, because that's what the, that book is about, is more about how you manage money. I took those same principles and I used it with my credit. And it was a game changer for me, a, a complete game changer for me. Now we use our credit to produce. And that's what it was originally created for anyway. Credit was created for businesses. Credit was created for producing more. That's what it was created for. But when we were introduced to consumer credit, that's when things really started to take a spiral uh, out of control. Uh, and so I would say, use your credit to invest. Real estate. I mean, we, we're connected with so many amazing people. Danielle Pierce, she's amazing. We teach people how to take their credit, invest into tax liens, invest into you know a, flip, a fix and flip, invest into the Forex stock market. It's pretty amazing what you can do once you tap into that. So it's just changing the mindset and the habits around it. And once you do, you'll see a lot of success. Well, Jerry, I want to say thank you so much for coming on our podcast. It's always a pleasure to have you and the information that you provided. I know that those that are listening are definitely being blessed by it and are going to do what's necessary to switch our paradigms from a consumer-based thinking to a producer-based thinking. And so we're going to utilize our credit so that it now produces wealth. And we're not on the other side where we're just consumers. Jerry, you'll be teaching the credit building workshop of the Joseph Business School online for those of you who do live in different states coming up on May the 30th. So if you have not done so, please take the time to register for this course. If you want to learn how to utilize your credit in order to build wealth, if you just want to understand what credit is and how it works, remember the Bible tells us in Hosea, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. When you do not know what a thing is used for, meaning we're gonna talk about credit. When the purpose of a thing is not known, we often know that abuse is inevitable. And so what we wanna do is to make sure that you are set on straight street so that from now on, when you use your credit, as Jerry put it so plainly, we're going to utilize and leverage our credit for wealth creation. Jerry, thank you so much for coming on our podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. It is a pleasure. And for those of you who have not done so already, be sure to look at the link below on this lower third and register for that credit building workshop that's going to be coming up on May the 30th. Again, that's May the 30th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. online. This is Central Standard Time. Be sure to register for this course. Hey, I am your host, Jill Thompson. And for those of you who are tuning in to Money Mondays for the very first time, we welcome you, but ask that you do come back. 
We have financial experts that come on a consistent basis to educate us about money, building our personal finances, and how we can grow our businesses and generate wealth creation. I am your host, Jill Thompson. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you all prosper this year in the year of glory. Have a great day, everybody.